Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of One Vision and the start of our new season, FinTech Views. Joining us today is Jocelyn Davis, an internationally known author and speaker, and the former head of R&D for Global Leadership Deployment Consultancy. Welcome to the show, Jocelyn. Thank you, Theo. Happy to be here. So this is I, I'm super excited to talk to you today because, first of all, I think you connected with me on LinkedIn out of the blue. So I, I always appreciate um, connections on social, but especially fellow authors, because um, I, I often look at people and I say, oh, my God, how do you write this? Wait, how do you write another one? Oh, wait, how do you write yet another one? So we'll get to that because congratulations on your latest book, which I just got. It's called Insubordinate. 12 New Archetypes for Women Who Lead. Now, before we dive into it, can you tell our audience a little bit about your journey and especially how did you go from the corporate world to becoming a five-time book author? That is um, quite amazing accomplishment. Thank you. Uh, yes, happy to. So I uh, worked for a company called the Forum Corporation, a leadership and sales training company for 23 and a half years uh, and started out as a copy editor in an entry level position and then stayed at the company for my practically my whole career and rose to become eventually the head of R&D. Uh, on the executive team. Um, so that was all great. I uh, learned a lot. Wonderful company. Uh, but in 2013, I was um, let go, fired. And the reason I was fired that they gave me was for insubordination. Now, really, this was it was because of sort of political stuff going on. There, there was a new regime that came in. They, um, you know, everybody knows that that story. Uh, so um, uh, I was I was being sort of pushed out along with some other folks, but um, they didn't want to pay me any severance, basically. So they needed to come up with a cause for my <laughs> for my um, sacking. So uh, they they said that I that I had been insubordinate. And at the time, I, um, I mean, I was, I was in shock. I, you know, it was all, um, quite, um, upsetting, but there was a little part of me that thought that sort of laughed at that, that term insubordinate and thought to myself, wow, that's pretty cool. Like I've been labeled insubordinate. I'm going to do something with that one day. So, uh, Time went on. I, I went out on my own, became an in, independent consultant, and I had written a book at the company before I left, a book called Strategic Speed, which is about strategy execution. Um, and I went on to write another book after I after I left and I was an independent consultant. I wanted to write another book to sort of support my, my business. Um, and that book is called The Greats on Leadership. Um, and it's about classic uh, thinkers and authors and what they have to teach us about leadership. And it was so fun and so great writing that book. And I liked it way more than being a consultant, frankly. So I uh, I sort of pivoted to, um, to become an author uh, full time. And that's what I do now. So, you know, here we are now, five books later. And I... Um, had, went back to this this uh, incident ten years ago of being called insubordinate and being laid off, uh, and thought, okay, it's time to write that book. So I did, and <laughs> I wrote this this book that is called Insubordinate: Twelve New Archetypes for Women Who Lead. That is quite a story. Um... I almost feel like this is the greatest comeback, um, you know, it, a way <laughs> it of is a showing. Good <laughs> right? it, um, it it right reminds me of now. Mine is much less fun than yours, but I remember in my senior year in high school, I flunked my physics. I just wasn't interested. Um, it was the delivery. It was the I had better things to do. I was busy with a uh, student council and, and editorial board and school magazine and, and all of that stuff. 
And I'm like, ah, this is boring. So I flunked it. Now, that was not the fun part. The fun part was um, my dad actually knew the teacher. So that was bad. The worst was he said it in front of my entire class, the teacher. He said, you are so bad with physics that you'll never, ever become an engineer. Now, this was my senior year. So I ended up switching my school because originally I was going to go to Bucknell. Um, and I had a, um, I had already applied for geology. I had a dorm assigned an email and all of that. I switched to RPI. I switched my major to chemical engineering. I aced all my physics, one, two, three. I went back to my high school and I said, ah, hello, here you go. That was my comeback story. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> but I, I like yours because you actually have a whole book to prove hello. <laughs> and it is something that is immensely useful for others. Because I was, I was flipping through it. And I'm like, wait, which type am I? I'm like, maybe air, maybe this one, maybe that. I, it, was, it was fun. And, and you pulled a lot of interesting things and themes um, with it, the way you define leadership styles. And you had a mix of fictional stories yes. along with everyday women. It's super interesting. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about the book and how you came about doing the framing like that? Because it's, it's different. I don't think I've ever read anything like that. Yeah. And what are some of the key messages you want people to 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 have when they read the book? Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the books the books that I like to write are books that combine. Um, <laughs> they're 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 weird books, honestly. They're um, <laughs> they're very different because I like to combine uh, legends, stories of the past, uh, classic authors, classic stories, classic literature, and philosophy, uh, and combine that with present day research examples, practical tips, et cetera. So it's really, my books are always a mix of very old and very new. Um, and I think that's a wonderful combination to, um, because, you know, honestly, there's, um, you know, even though we are always talking about, you know, what's new these days in the future and everything, if you, if you look back to the past, you'll see that there is a lot of wisdom to be gained from the very distant past. And a lot of what we talk about today, particularly around leadership, is not new. Um, and many people in the thinkers and writers in the past um, really said it best. <laughs> so there's a lot to learn from, from those old stories and legends. And I, I that's why I like to bring them into my books. Uh, Insubordinate, 12 New Archetypes for Women Who Lead, um, looks at as the subtitle suggests, uh, women's leadership archetypes. And I identify 12 of them. And these are basically labels that have been used in a, in a negative way often for, um, for women. So there are things like the witch, the snow queen, the temptress, the Amazon. Um, some of them are, are, you know, not so negative sounding like, the Amiga or the Empress. Um, but a lot of them have been used as uh, to stereotype women in a negative way. Um, but my claim is that we can reclaim them and that we should reclaim them for our benefit. Uh, so really the, the, the takeaway from the, the key takeaway from the book, there's three of them that I hope people will get. One is that each of us has a, a as women, or men, really, gender doesn't doesn't make any difference here. It's it's about this is about centering women's stories and women's stories of leadership and sort of identifying with those stories. Um, but the, so the first takeaway is for us, whoever we may be, to recognize that we have um, sort of a, a comfort zone, a, a home archetype that is perfectly valid. And so for, take me, for instance, I am the snow queen. That's my comfort, comfort zone. Um, and often in the past, I've been, uh, you know, told, oh, you're, you know, you're kind of, you're cold, you're uptight, you're unfriendly. 
Um, and you know, that's, that's not a leader needs to be warm and outgoing and extroverted. Well, that's, that's just not me. You know, I am the snow queen and guess what? The snow queen can be a fantastic leader as can all 12 of these types. So the first takeaway is for, is for, um, us to know our strengths, to know our, our, our archetype and to lean into that. Um, and and have it work for us. The second takeaway is that there are other archetypes that we can also tap into. So I, I really believe, and I, sometimes I get in trouble for saying this, but I think that women's key strength is our wide range. The fact that we really contain multitudes, we can we can do. We can multitask. We can uh, really expand um, wider and broader than um, than than any men really can, because because men tend to be more one dimensional, sort of moving forward in a straight line, um, which is is great and fine. But there's there's a sort of women's way to lead, and it's much more expansive, much more um, various, if you will. So the second takeaway from the book is to help people understand that they can tap into these other archetypes that we all have within ourselves. So I can tap into my Amazon or or my temptress or my mesmerist, um, and that can work in 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 different situations for me. And then the third and final takeaway is that we can learn to appreciate other people's styles, other people's archetypes. So rather than looking at another, a woman and, and thinking, you know, as let's be honest, we as women tend to be very hard on each other. And we'll look at other women and say, oh, she's so bossy. Oh, you know, uh, I don't like her. She's, oh, she's so flighty or she's an idiot or whatever. You know, we're, we're very hard on each other. Um, but with these, um, archetypes, I hope people will recognize that we can look at another woman who's, who's, whose strengths are different from ours and say, oh, huh, you know what? She's the empress or she's the escapist or she's the Amazon. She's not like me, but she's, you know, she is worthy and great as a leader and let's appreciate that. So that's what the book is about. I love that, especially the last point, it resonates and you're absolutely right. I think women tend to be a little bit more critical of other female leaders. I think some of the worst words that I have heard people use to describe me often came from women. Uh, (laughs) And uh, especially in the corporate world, I remember, um, oh my goodness, through the last 20 some years, um, it, it was always harsh um i remember being called ferocious that's why i I, when i was reading your book this week and i i laughed out loud i'm like oh yeah but you know what some people have to be and some people are better um in different ways and i think styles change too throughout you know the years as you get older you get more mature as you get to teenagers um everything changes but but it's it's really cool i like how you're saying that we have a home um archetype and then we can tap into other ones i think that that's the beautiful part about leadership too is we learn to adapt um and we use different strengths in different situations so that that's really cool now yes. onto something fun and that was how you and i got connected and and really really appreciate it is that you have a big book tour coming out not one city is multi cities and it's called the beyond lean in I love that title because I used to tell people, um, this was quite a few years ago on stage and someone was asking me about my opinion about leaning in. And I said, I'm leaning in so much that I'm toppling over. So <laughs> enough about that. <laughs> so, tell, tell us a little bit more about the tour and how that idea came about and what you're planning to do with the tour. Yes. So that the idea came about just as you said, because I feel that I am done leaning in. <laughs> I mean, Lean In was great as a, I, I, I admire Sheryl Sandberg. I admire her book. 
Lean In uh, came out 10 years ago, um, was a big hit. But even at the time, I remember thinking, you know what, there's there's a lot more to leadership than just lean in. Um, and I and I feel again, we as women, I, I say this in, in the book Insubordinate, we get a lot of advice from um, from people about how to be leaders. And one of the main piece of, pieces of advice that we get is lean in. You know, we're always being told, well, you got to yeah, try harder and do the, do more of this, do more of that. So part of the um, uh, reason that I, again, that I wrote insubordinate was to correct that, um, that advice and say, hey, you know what, there's a lot of other things we can do. We can fly high, we can flow through, we can back off. We can stand firm. You know, there's um, there's many, many ways to lead and ways to be beyond lean in. So with that sort of idea beyond lean in, um, I wanted to do a, um, a tour to um, honestly to, to promote Insubordinate, to promote that book. But I started to think, you know, who who else could I involve in this? Because this message of beyond lean in, I think resonates for so many women. We're so tired of, of the standard leadership advice that, you know, honestly has, is it's, it's all from men, right? It's, it's all the, the best known leadership books. They're all by men. They're all directed at men. The leadership models presented in them are all male um, and the advice tends to be, you know, just, it has a very male spin to it. Um, so I started to wonder, like, who else, who is out there? What what women authors and thought leaders are out there talking about leadership, talking about career success, talking about ambition and ways to succeed? Um, and, you know, why can't we talk about their books and talk about their ideas about leadership and about careers and and all of that. So um, I started to look for um, uh, people like that, people like you, because <laughs> everyone should know um, Theo is is um, featured on the uh, joining us for the for, for the uh, DC stop on the tour, um, which I'm very pleased and honored to have you. Um, but then there are 15 of us all together, 15 women authors, all of us who are redefining leadership. And um, we're going to be in uh, New York City and D.C., Boston, Austin, Texas and L.A. in September and October. It's going to be a fun tour. I can't wait to meet you and others in person. Um, and I can't wait to to meet more people who's going to be joining you on the tour because I think that goes back to what you said earlier. It's the breadth and the depth of women and things that we do and how we think about things and our attitude and our styles and all of that. It's I, I, when I when I first met some of you virtually on screen, I was like, wow, we're all very different. Um, you know, I, I, I ordered a, a few of the books and um, I want to start reading it because I can find them that, you know, even though we're all together in the, in this tour and we're talking about leadership and, and career, as you mentioned, we probably all have different approaches to things. And, and I think that's the diversity of, of ideas and the richness of the ideas that hopefully, you know, we can all learn from each other, um, beyond the tours. Yes, exactly. You know, there there's a a meme that was circulating a, a few months ago with um all these these leadership books or or um self-help books, I guess. Uh and they were all laid out uh, there were there were like, I don't know, 30, 40 of them all laid out on the floor. Um all of them with basically with white covers and it was it was the standard one. It was, you know, good to great and who moved my cheese and um uh, lean in and, um, uh, I don't, you know, seven habits of highly effective people, all of the sort of standard self-help books. And the comment on the top was, you know, all self-help books are, are alike. And you don't need to read any of these really because they all have the, exactly the same message. 
And I thought to myself, you know, um, first of all, I looked at all the, those books and I think every single one of them was by a man. Um, and as I jokingly said in my response, um, 90% of those, uh, all the covers were white and 90% of the authors are white. <laughs> so, you know, here's this, this uh, statement being made about how well, all self-help books, all leadership books are alike. Well, yeah, these ones are all alike because they're, you know, they're basically all by the same kind of person. Um, so I really think it's time for all of us to open our eyes a little bit, look around, look at these. I mean, I it it, it was not difficult at all for me to find these 15 um, women authors, all, as you say, very diverse in their, in, you know, who they are, their approaches, their perspectives, a um, lot of different uh, um, angles on leadership and success. Um, it didn't take me long at all to, to find you 15. Um, so I, I think uh, we can, we can do this, you know, we can expand our view beyond, uh, you know, beyond the typical. I cannot agree more. One of the things I do a lot with conferences is pulling in different people to the stage because we don't want to keep hearing from the same people all the time. We don't want to hear from the same view all the time because there might be different views of innovation. There will be different views of how we can use technology for good. And the world that we serve is so diverse. There's no reason why we cannot incorporate more ways of doing things. Um, because we're not monologue. So, right. and, and this leads to my next question I have for you. Um, everything we're doing, the way we're doing things and how we're working, where we're working and all of that has changed quite a bit. Um, people talk a lot about quote unquote future of work that's been evolving the last few years. And one of the things I keep thinking of, and I, I love, so preface, I love working from home. Because I love the flexibility of having my own time and all of that to manage some sort of work-life balance. I think that's a misnomer. But to at least have some flexibility. However, comma, imagine being a woman just starting out without network, without people, not really knowing how to navigate the whole work culture. That's difficult. Um immensely isolating and intimidating, I would say. Um, yes. That's something that I don't feel like we've talked about a lot. Um, so I'm curious to hear from you, if you were to give them three tips to start or some advice, how do we navigate this, this changing world of work? What would you say? Yes, great, great question. So I would say, yes, three tips. The first one um, I would offer is that um, this this is it's all about mindset, right? I think that uh, young women, especially, but young men as well, when when they're entering the workforce, they don't realize just how much they have to offer. So I, I would say no, know that you have a lot to offer, and it's not just about your. Um, or not even mostly about your formal skills. It's about you as a person, you as a human being. Um, you you have, as I say in, in my book, Insubordinate, you, you contain multitudes. You have more in you than you think and more in you that will be valued, valued seriously in the workplace. Because people often think, I know when I was starting out long ago, I thought, oh, you know, well, I have this degree in philosophy and English literature. Like, what am I going to do with that? Um, and I didn't really see that I had so many talents and passions and skills that would be valued um, and were valued in, in the workplace. So, so number one is just know that you have a lot to offer uh, more than you think. Um, second tip would be uh, never underestimate the power of a kind word. And, and when I say that, I mean, I mean, the kind words that you, even as a, as an entry level 
lowly, you know, whatever, uh, the, the power of your kind words to other people, people who may be your peers, people who may be your, your superiors, you know, above you in the hierarchy, um, everybody, I don't care if you're the CEO of the biggest corporation on the planet, everybody needs a kind or caring word um, from other people. Um, you would be surprised, I would say, as I became eventually, you know, climbed the ladder and became a um, member of the executive team at my old company, you would be amazed at how many times I was grateful for a kind word from somebody. And I, I don't just mean, I don't mean sympathy necessarily. I just mean, you know, somebody saying, hello, how are you today? Or, or um, you know, oh, I loved your presentation or anything. You know, how, how, how's your daughter? Uh, I was so grateful for every instance of just a, you know, an authentic, genuinely um, kind and caring word from anybody. Um, so I would say, don't, yeah, don't underestimate your power to be that person who's, who's, you know, spreading that um, positive positivity. Um, and then the last tip I would say is really along the same lines. It's to both take and give credit freely. So be generous in your um, giving of credit to others and also generous to yourself in taking credit. Because we as, again, as women, especially are often reluctant to take credit. We don't, <laughs> we don't, we're not very good at taking compliments. We're not very good at saying, yes, I, I did that. Thank you. Yep. It was, it was great. Wasn't it? <laughs> um, so have a, have a generous spirit toward yourself and towards others. Um, because again, you, you will be surprised at how much that means to people and how much it will mean to yourself to, um, to, to have that generosity of spirit and give, give and take credit freely. The, um, generosity to yourself especially I think you know I remember quite a few of my friends often comment on that is people will say oh you know what a great job and then we'll always say oh yeah but you know this is pretty easy or we'll deflect it to someone else and um, men don't typically do that so <laughs> so that is a, that is an excellent tip um, and be kind be kind to people that we work with and be kind to people around us um, I think the world can use more kindness, especially after the last few years. Um, before I let you go, I do want to ask you one last thing. And I think that that could be really interesting. Um, if there's one topic that you want to explore more in your next book, because, you know, you can't stop at five. It'll be like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, what what would that be, Jocelyn? Yeah. So actually, this is a <laughs> this is a great setup question. Um although you you didn't realize it because i have recently completed the manuscript for my next book um which is very different it is a mental illness memoir because i had a drastic um mental health collapse mental and physical health um collapse a couple of years ago um it was really awful really scary um, gave me a whole new perspective on uh, mental health, mental illness. Um, I was I was actually um, in a psych ward, a locked psych ward for two weeks. Um, it was really, really, really terrifying. Um, at the same time, however, I <laughs> I learned an awful lot. Uh, from the people that I met in that journey, it was a four month journey through, um, I call it Madland. Um, it's like Alice in Wonderland. This is Jocelyn in Madland. Uh, and the folks that I met, my, my fellow patients, um, and the healthcare professionals, the doctors, nurses, therapists, um, they were just a fascinating group of people. Um, all very human all with interesting stories. And so this um, this book that I will now 
soon be um, seeking a publisher for. Uh, it's called Ticket to Madland. Um, one woman's uh, journey through a wild mental illness. Um, this this book is really my uh, effort to kind of tell the story of of this world of this this world of of mental illness, and um, to hopefully reduce some of the stigma around uh, that that whole world and shed some light on it. So that uh, other people will, you know, maybe not feel as alone um, in their mental health journeys, and um, yeah, we'll kind of feel some feel some hope because I you know, I made it through, and uh, I was very lucky in, in that. But um, it was a fascinating journey. So yeah, wow, I'm speechless, and uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah, it. I can't wait to read it. It is, as you say, there's so much stigma to it because we're all taught in different ways that we need to be perfect. We need to do this. We need to just share the positive side of our stories. We don't ever talk about our struggles. We don't ever talk about failures. We celebrate success, but not failures. Um, yeah. And we don't share enough about our personal journeys. So I think we're doing ourselves and others a disservice because this is human. We are humans. And so thank you so much for sharing that. I really cannot wait to read it. Um, I, I think it will be very, very helpful to a lot of others too. So thank you for your time, Jocelyn. I appreciate it. And I cannot wait um, to meet you in person. For those who would love to buy a book and to learn more about the Beyond Lean In um, book tour, where can they go? Yes. So please go to my website, which is jocelynrdavis.com. Got to have the R in the middle. Otherwise you'll end up at, uh, at a very different sort of site. Um, so jocelynrdavis.com. And yes, you can find all my books there and you can also get tickets uh, for the Beyond Lean In tour, which I hope everybody will come to. Thank you so much. I'll put that in the show notes as well. So appreciate your time uh, today. And for the rest of you, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of One Vision. We will talk to you all next week.